Bitney Goes to War There was once a tiny kingdom. It was an old, old kingdom. No one really knew when it was established or how it came to be. It was a kingdom with a name that no one could pronounce. Its people called themselves simply Stone People. Well, the Stone People loved their god. They worshipped him at the foothills of the smallest hill in their tiny kingdom. Each morning at dawn, the people gathered around the tiny hill to sing songs and to dance before their god. Then they all dispersed to do their work of the day. Rain or shine, each day began in this way. Cool or warm, they gathered at dawn. Only those too sick to go to the tiny hill at the center of the tiny kingdom didn't go. They were such a holy people, these stone people, that even the rocks, the trees, and the rivers of their kingdom were said to be holy. If you were a visitor there and hadn't learned the ways of the kingdom, you could hear its mountains peak and sing. So were the trees, the water wells, and the streams. Bitney had heard of this tiny kingdom and its people. Sometimes, he flew over the kingdom on his way to the world's coldest places. But he had never stopped at the tiny kingdom, for it was never too cold or too hot there. All year round, the temperature stayed about the same. It was a kingdom of happy people who treated each other nicely, and they treated their visitors as they treated themselves. Then one year, soon after the start of the rainy season, something that frightened the people happened. Two children disappeared. The two children, a boy and a girl, had gone to fetch their parents' goats and sheep from pasture at sunset. They had not returned by supper time and were never to be seen again. Each day for a long time, two children disappeared, always a boy and a girl. Sometimes they were lost while at play with other children or while on their way to gather firewood. Sometimes they were lost while on their way to visit relatives. The tiny kingdom mourned. The people searched everywhere, but never found who or what it was that was responsible for those cruel acts. Then one day, a woman picking mushrooms with her husband saw tiny human bones at the edge of the forest. She screamed, describing the discovery to her husband. They ran through the villages, crying out to everyone what they had seen. The elders of the villages, all the young men and the young women, took anything that could be used as a weapon and went to the edge of the forest. They took axes, hoes, shovels, spears, bows and arrows. Some took fire. Others brought cans and drums with which to make noise, hoping the noise would frighten their foe. They moved in, surrounding the forest. But before they could begin to search the forest, two of them, a man and a woman, were snatched by a huge claw. Those two disappeared into the forest, never to be seen again. The people of the kingdom retreated. They planned how best to save themselves and their kingdom. But even as they sat at that planning meeting, a huge claw reached and snatched two of them, a man and a woman. That night many families moved to another kingdom, abandoning their homes, their cattle, their goats and sheep, as well as the crops growing in their fields. This once happy kingdom had been turned into a kingdom of fear and despair. When Bitney's master heard about this terrible situation, he told Bitney about it. From his birth, Bitney had been trained as a warhorse. As soon as Bitney heard the story, he knew that no human being could fight this war. Only he, Bitney, could help. He told his master that he would go to the tiny kingdom at midnight. Bitney arrived in the tiny kingdom with a force so thunderous that houses shook. Some rocks fell from their perches on the hills. It was as though there had been an earthquake. Bitney's landing at the edge of the kingdom drilled holes in the ground, hitching his hind legs on what appeared to be chains that had been crisscrossed over the entirety of the land of the stone people. He plowed the ground with his hind legs as he advanced. 
and as he went, the chains broke and burned behind him. By the time he reached the forest, 60 seconds after his thunderous landing, the whole sky was filled with fire. The most intense heat that came from the fire flowing out of his head, he reserved for the forest. The forest melted with the intensity of the heat Bitney released onto it, and whatever had been snatching people from the forest melted in that heat. The next day, the people of the tiny kingdom woke up to find a charred ground where the forest had stood before. Nothing else had burned. When they went to the charred ground, they found a claw. A very big claw. This is how they knew that their foe had lost the war. They gathered around their tiny hill and worshipped their god. No one ever knew that Bitney also had a part in the people's restoration. But now, when Bitney flies over the tiny kingdom on his way to the world's coldest places, he feels very happy to again see the children playing happily in the meadows of the tiny kingdom with a name that no one can pronounce.